horoscope for the um, the upcoming new lunar cycle that starts on the 20th of July when we have the second uh, new moon in Cancer um, in you know a couple of months. So this particular uh, new moon is going to be related, I think, to the um, the solstice solar eclipse that we had back in on the 21st of June. So that was also a new moon. And it was at the beginning degrees of Cancer, and this is now at the end degrees of Cancer. So it's almost kind of like a bookend. And this is, this theme of kind of twinning or kind of duality, polarity, I think is going to be um, active throughout this particular lunation cycle. Uh, Venus will be in the sign of Gemini, so I think kind of highlighting that. But on top of that, we've got um, an interesting Sabian symbol. Um, it is a Greek muse weighing newly born twins on golden scales so here we've got this idea of twins which i think is gemini so we've got venus and gemini and then interestingly we've got this idea of golden scales <clears throat> um which is very much associated with the other uh, venus ruled sign of um libra now at the time of this new moon we're going to have um, an opposition almost exact opposition between the sun and Capricorn. So there is going to be this balancing balancing energy again between C Cancer and Capricorn that we had at the at the last lunar eclipse in Capricorn, where you know the sun and the moon are across uh, on different sides of the horizon. So it's going to be a similar kind of thing, except here we are we're almost integrating, and um, I think starting to work with um, you know trying to find that sort of middle ground where we're not necessarily thrown by things um you know as as easily as as we're not as reactive as as we we might otherwise be but anyway let's get into a reading and see what comes out um, and we can go from there so um I th just to say that i have actually um, um developed an ebook if you're interested in learning geomancy i've i've written a little ebook that's got a breakdown of suggested spreads a kind of how to of you know how to set up this particular spread and to work with it um, and uh, and then I've also got a section on all the geomantic figures of what they mean some nice keywords some symbolic associations etc so if that's something that you're interested in then do have a look I'll, I'll put a link in the description box but I've also got a link on my website so if you go to the front page of astrologysphere.com you'll see there's a, a page there on geomancy and the, the link is in there anyway let's see what this this particular new moon has in store as far as fresh starts and new cycles for Leo. Interesting too that this happens a couple of days before the sun ingresses into Leo. And that is of course the start of Leo season, which is all about you. And there's also the, the Lionsgate portal that will open on the 26th of July or so. So about a week after this new moon. And then will peak on the 8th of August. interesting so we've got conjunctio here and um, again interesting um, given that we've got this this new moon which is usually the sun and the moon on the same side of the of the zodiac basically now for you the, the new moon will fall in your 12th house um, this is where you are so this is where we kind of start um, but nonetheless I think there's, there's a sense of certain things coming together as I said I, I feel as though this is a time of finding either um, that midpoint that balance between the two opposites or it's about integrating them so that they kind of come together in a harmonious kind of compromise in the middle sort of thing so um con conjunctio is on many levels about collaboration or kind of coming together with others so it seems as though for you this month may be um kind of mainly focused around working with and joining with other people relationships but these can be work relationships as well as um you know uh, personal relationships and it can also be a coming together of different parts of yourself so that may be uh, you know a theme interesting so here we've got jupiter in the sign of, of sagittarius so this is fire energy this is earth energy this is this is mercury in um uh, virgo which is where it's exalted 
so this is mental energy, but but it's very often directed outwards. So it's, it's a practical application of um, kind of constructs, mental constructs or intellectual constructs of plans, basically. So here we've got a quiz here, which is fourth house. So this is your roots, family, um, your ancestral ties, bloodlines, um, genetics. So this can be DNA, um, you know, anything that we inherit from from our bloodlines. Um, but it can also be gifts that we inherit through the family line, um, skills, abilities. But generally speaking, it, you know, it tends to be about um, home life, domesticity, children, family, feeling at home or feeling that we belong. And um, with Jupiter here, with this Aquisitio as your geomantic figure for the fourth house, um, there's a sense of kind of almost... Uh, the wealth that comes from being part of a, of a, a family, you know, there's that sense of generosity of kind of coming together with people, sitting around a table, sharing food, sharing um, good times, experiences. Um, it, there's, there's definitely a feeling of abundance here, but it might not necessarily be m sort of monetary abundance, although it could be, you know, it could be about an inheritance of some kind. Um, but I think more than likely it has to do with that feeling of wealth that comes from being surrounded by love, basically, and by people who support you. So in this sense, I think it's reiterating this idea, idea of conjunctio. Wow. Okay. So uh, when it comes to one-to-one -one relationships, there is definitely sort of passion still afoot. I think you did get this um, geomantic figure in one of your last two readings as well. So I kind of feel like this is an ongoing story here when it comes to key personal relationships. So this is one-to-one -one significant others you know, either committed partners that we are romantically involved with, that we live with, or, you know, someone that we are entrenched with in terms of a contract. So it's usually, a, you know, either a business partner or somebody we, we work with very closely, like a solicitor, a lawyer, or um, an accountant, that kind of thing. Um, so here uh, we've got Rebaeus, which is Mars in, in Scorpio, and this is this is passion kind of energy. So that can always work in one of two ways. It can either kind of fire us up and make us feel really connected to life, uh, you know, alive, but it can also work in a sort of um, detrimental way of kind of draining us of energy. And I think that um, with Venus moving to her second square of Neptune towards the end of July, um, we do need to be a little bit careful about... Uh, the dynamics between us and other people, because there is this um, this pattern that I think is becoming more and more apparent to a, a kind of a lot of people, um, where we can get involved in dynamics that are designed actually to drain our energy. Now, this can either be through sort of sexual cording, where people hook into your your sacral and your root chakras through uh, you know hooking up, and then literally drain you of energy through sort of high drama situations, or it can be um, a case of uh, situations that that create drama but then lead to misery, and then they are actually, um, you know, it, it can sound far-fetched until you start to do a little bit of research, but there are entities that feed off that negative energy. So just as much as there are people, there are energy vampires, there are also entities that feed off that energy, and sometimes the two can be connected. So. It, this is just something to be um, a little bit aware of if you keep getting red flags in this particular area that there's, there's some relationship that may be a little bit off balance that may have you emotionally off center and um, you know and, and perhaps you need to sort of uh, think about either spiritual protection techniques, um, energetic hygiene or simply um, finding ways to change the dynamics so that it's not so high drama, high emotion, high intensity kind of thing. So that's, that's one way of talking about this energy. Of course, this can also be sexual attraction. So it could be that you've met somebody and um, you're kind of in the midst of a new relationship that's, that's gone to a committed level um, that, that does have a lot of passion in it. But there again, you know, there is this need to kind of balance. And, um, you know, but that's something that, uh, that we can kind of get into later on in the reading. Interesting. So when it comes to career and... Um, your, your public life, there's this sense of need, needing to kind of reel back or cut back. Um, this is Kase, which is Saturn in Capricorn. Now, Saturn has recently uh, regressed back into Capricorn. It did so just before the, the lunar eclipse in, in Capricorn that happened 
um, you know, on the 5th of July. So th this could be related to that particular lunar eclipse. Perhaps something happened that made you realize that you need to let something go. You need to sort of cut back. It, it could well be something, you know, either being sort of made redundant, for example, um, if you've got a company, perhaps having to, um, to scale back in terms of um, saving money, um, you know, uh, kind of reducing overheads, that type of thing. Um, or it could simply be that an avenue that you were pursuing um, in terms of a career or sort of a, a vocation is perhaps being closed off to you because this is this is uh, Saturn in its kind of sense of imprisonment. So if you actually look at the geomantic figure, you can see that the, the double dots in the middle are kind of bounded by the single dots on the outside. So this is this is almost about being imprisoned in those rings of Saturn. And sometimes restriction is a good thing. You know, it forces us to realize where we have been a little bit excessive in the past, where there's been waste, for example, um, or where we need to improve. So perhaps we need to sort of refine or master certain skills. Um, and it can also sometimes be about realizing that, you know, one path isn't for you, but, you know, as one door closes, another one opens. So that, that could be what's kind of going on here in that, you know, career might not be going so well, but look at what's going on in family. So maybe it's a reorienting of priorities here. Um, right. I'm just going to pause the video while I do your um, conversions and we will discuss this in more depth when I come back. Hi Leo, welcome back. Um, so I've done your conversions and uh, we've got all the houses filled out now. So let's get into your reading a little bit further. Now, um, this particular new moon is going to be happening in your in your 12th house. So it's the second time you've had this new moon in your 12th house. And you could see this, as I said, as a kind of twin to the um, the new moon that we had in uh, June when we when we had the solstice solar eclipse so that started a six-month cycle so I think this is kind of taking you back to that energy and just um, kind of perhaps reminding you about something or taking things on a, a sort of a step and um, so the sun and the moon will be in your 12th house and the 12th house is all about your kind of unconscious mind your uh, what's going on internally for you um, and then it's interesting because at the uh, at this particular new moon, we're going to have Saturn in the sixth house in, in Capricorn, which is retrograde. So Saturn was quite prominent at the last lunar eclipse in Capricorn, and it's going to be prominent again because Saturn will be making an almost exact conjunction to the sun and the moon in Cancer at the time of this particular um, uh, new moon. So um, again, we've got a similar kind of an energy from both the solar eclipse in Cancer, which was a new moon, and the lunar eclipse in Capricorn, which was a full moon. We've got this sort of, I think what we're being asked to do is to say is to balance or integrate this energy. Um, so 12th and 6th houses, we've got the same geomantic figure in both, which I find fascinating. Um, now, this is Mars in the day sign of Aries. So this is very strong margin energy, and margin um, energy in sort of in this well this geomantic figure as a in, as a whole can mean one of two things it can either mean kind of conflict and a sense of stress and kind of tension or it can mean focus drive purpose and a, a desire to start fresh um, now sometimes of course we have to start fresh because we're forced to and um, I think it's interesting that we've got Carse here in your 10th house, which seems to be closing out something for you, you know, when it comes to work and career. Um, and this is reiterated by your second house where we've got Tristia. This is your house of earned income and possessions. Um, so Tristia is Saturn in, um, in Aquarius. So it's again, it's the Saturn energy. And I've, Tristia is to do with, it's literally tears. So it's, it's kind of sadness or loss. Um, but more in the sense of like regret or it's about, you, you know, the, the emotional experience of loss or disappointment as opposed to, you know, physical loss in terms of money. And um, so I kind of feel as though you, you're feeling a bit upset at this particular new moon um, about something that's ending in terms of a, of, of a career. It's like, it's almost like the end of an era. So maybe you've been doing a particular job for a long time or you've owned a company in a particular area. Um, and perhaps due to COVID-19, you've been kind of forced to either cut back, scale back, close, um, change direction, that type of thing. And this is causing stress on a kind of day-to-day -day level, which in turn is impacting your, your kind of mental state. 
Um, so there's this definite need for balance between these two things. Um, but what I find interesting is how off, uh, sort of within the spread anyway, is how many positive geomantic figures we have when it comes to other people. So I think what it's kind of saying is that you need to really see, um, take your, your focus from the outward world into the internal world and into relationships and see where kind of true value lies. And maybe this is why Tristia is here in your second house, because this is also the house of values. So for instance, in the eighth house, which is shared possessions, usually with one other person, we've got Laetitia, which is about joy and happiness and this really upbeat, um, you know, high vibrational energy of Jupiter in Pisces. Then in the, in the 11th house, which is friends and social networks, we've got Acquisitio, which is usually about financial gain. So this is Jupiter in Sagittarius. Again, very buoyant, exuberant energy. Um, and we've got Acquisitio echoed in your 4th house, which is family. So I really feel as though right now, this particular moon phase is kind of telling you to focus less on externals like career and more on your relationships and to realize how much support you've got from the people around you. You know, how much wealth you have when it, in, in emotional terms this is kind of emotional capital so even if things are not going well sort of you know financially or in terms of career things are really working well for you when it comes to um your your key relationships now we do have this rebase in your seventh house as i said and this is mars in scorpio so we've got this reiteration of mars energy now it may be significant that um you know mars is currently traveling through um, the sign of, um, of of Aries and that Mars transits are going to be important, you know, during the upcoming lunar cycle. That's certainly something to be aware of. Um, so kind of look out for uh, for Mars transits going forward, you know, between now and the, and the next um, full moon. Um, the other thing to say is that you you do seem to be oh when it comes to Rebaeus. We do have Albus as one of your um, your witnesses, your right witness. So I think that, you know, Albus and Rubeus are uh, considered to be the sort of twins or the kind of the, the counterparts to each to each other in that they represent op opposite qualities. So I've kind of talked about this before. Rubeus means red in Latin and Albus means white. And in alchemy and um, in many systems, Western esoteric systems, the colors red and white are associated with um, passion and life force on one hand, so Eros, um, and then um, Albus is associated with Thanatus or kind of death or reason, so that kind of cold, hard logic. This is heart versus head sort of energy. Um, so I think that what it's asking you to do is to sort of find a little bit of balance when it comes to um, certain one-to-one -one relationships that seem to be a little bit out of balance when it comes to levels of emotion. Um, so that's one thing um, that I think that the, um, you know, that the, the cards are, are asking you to do because all your other relationships seem to be in balance and sort of doing well. It's just kind of here in the fifth house that we've got um, the end of some kind of cycle. So this may have something to do with what's going on in your seventh house. These are often linked. Very often this is the house of new relationships of children and this is the house of um, of, of committed relationships. So very often there's a connection between the two and this can also be uh, creative collaboration. So on some level, this might be quite a ca causing you stress if you are in, for example, some kind of um, creative collaboration or partnership um, and that there needs to be something released. That's what the card of Draconis is kind of saying here. And it's being reiterated by the, the left witness here. Um, so definitely time to let go of something and it could be excess emotion given that we've got Albus here, that this is throwing you out of balance a little bit. Uh, and taking away too much of your energy. So that could also be what's causing the problem here. And it may have something to do with self-esteem. You know, second house um, sometimes is, well, it is very often related to relationships in the sense that if we value ourselves and we value our own energy enough to know when we need to sort of refill the well, then we won't necessarily allow our energy to leak too much into sort of high drama, high intensity situations that drain us of energy. Uh, so that's one thing to say. But then we do have this positive Laetitia here in your eighth house, which is usually about collaboration. So um, perhaps it's, it's simply a case of being a little bit more logical. In other words, um, perhaps drawing boundaries, for example, or just not being willing to, to engage in constant conflict and um, making it clear that you need things to change uh, and that if you do, 
you know, this could lead to quite a lot of happiness and joy. Um, but of course, you know, collaborating with other people can, it doesn't necessarily have to be this particular person. It could be, you know, um, somebody here, like, a, uh, you know, um, a child or a creative partner. It could be a friend or someone in a social network or in a professional network. Um, or it could be a family member. So there's lots of ways here that you, that you are able to create joy. Um, and, and I think here what it's also saying is that, you know, sometimes this might require opening up a little bit because eighth house is often about boundaries. So there, there may be some, some aspect to that. Um, but just going back to the new moon. So you are definitely starting a new cycle when it comes to the way that you think your mentality, um, your not your outlook on life, but more your internal world. And perhaps emotional regulation is an important part of this process, you know, as it is for most people. I think, you know, certainly meditation can help here. It certainly can calm that, that sort of quite hot Mars in, in, in Aries energy, which is quite hot-headed and impulsive and, and very often is explosive. It's very um, volatile fire, basically, fire energy. Um, so I do think that that, that could potentially help. Um, and then, you know, um, I think that the other thing to say, of course, is that Jupiter is going to be making a sextile within about a week of this um, lunation cycle, where, you know, which starts on the 20th. So about, you know, the 27th, I think, we've got Vien um, Jupiter making a sextile to Neptune. So Jupiter will, will be here in your sixth house because it's also in Capricorn um, and then Neptune will be here in your eighth house so interesting that we've got Pisces here because Neptune is in Pisces so we've almost got this kind of combination of Jupiter and Neptune in this particular geomantic figure um, and so I kind of feel as though um, you know maybe one of the keys to um, shifting things for yourself and to reducing stress has to do with asking for help so it may be that you actually need to bring in somebody to help you, whether it's, um, you know, a, a consultant, an accountant, a lawyer, something to kind of help you offload the stress a little bit. You know, if work is, is and career are proving to be quite stressful, if the kind of money is stressful, maybe it is time to sort of get the professional advice from like an accountant or a financial advisor or something of that ilk. And that that could actually really um, help you because uh, the Jupiter Neptune sextile is really uplifting positive energy. Um, but of course, it's going to be countered on the same day by um, Venus in, in Gemini. So there is this, this need to be realistic. There is also the need to be very clear about what is practical and what is not. And I think this is what Conjunctio is maybe highlighting with um, Mercury here in the very practical sign of, of um Virgo, that uh, you need to be quite practical, and, and Virgo is the opposite sign to Pisces. So um, there's definitely a need to be practical. You are the practical one. I think you need to be quite cerebral now. I think it's asking you to come into your head energy to balance any sort of emotional um, imbalances here. And, you know, perhaps get in somebody who is perhaps a, a little bit more optimistic, um, not necessarily happy-go-lucky, but that's compassionate, sympathetic, um, is a good listener, somebody who's there to help, basically, who sees their, their role as being one of service. Um, because I think that they could make a massive difference for you when it comes to your overall, um, your your stress management levels and your, your outlook on life. Which, is, as I say, I think is what this is, is all about. And it's interesting because the outcome of the spread is Fortuna Minor, which is about positive shifts, change in circumstances, but also help from outside. So this is very often either protection from people in places of, of power, or it is help from, you know, and it can be unseen help from the spirit realm. It, you know, so this could also be about um, contacting, you know, the the uh, realm of spirit and asking for help if you are not coping very well. But I do think when we've got so much good energy happening in your 11th and your 4th house, then um, I think what it's saying is ask for help within your your your, your social sphere or your family sphere and, and perhaps they can come in and help you here to, to work out any stress. But, you know, Mars, let's face it, Mars in um, Mars in Aries is is forward movement there's very much progress there's kind of this oomph there's kind of like 
there's juice in the battery. So let's not, you know, say that this is all negative. It's the beginning of a new cycle for you. And it could be that you, as a fire sign, need a little bit of that oomph. Um, you know, maybe all that water energy is being a little bit too overwhelming for you. Um, and it's putting out your fire a little bit. So you may find that this Mars in um, Aries is actually quite motivating and, and sort of gives you the drive that you need to push forward through problems, etc. Um, so yes, a kind of a, a mixed reading, but I think on the whole positive, we've got Fortuna Minor as your outcome, which is very positive. It, it is the sun in Leo. So I do think that by the time you get to Leo season, which is not actually that far off the this particular new moon, it's, you know, um, the sun goes into, uh, let's, let me just have a look quickly. The sun goes into Leo on the 22nd. Yes. So within two days of this of this new moon so once you kind of get into leo season i think you will really start to you know feel more yourself and um all this fire energy will start to come into its own and, and really sort of light you up again uh, so that even though you've you you know you've had some setbacks and you've had a bit of stress with with partners um i think that by the end of this lunation cycle you're going to be feeling a lot ha happier and that this happiness is going to come from asking for help from collaboration with others and so on so anyway i hope that's been helpful leo do leave me a comment in the description in the comments below if this has resonated um i'd love it if you hit the like button if you enjoyed this reading and um yes i'll catch you again in a couple of weeks for my uh, full moon reading